what it is. I'm going to show you guys how to do a setup on a typical cheap guitar you would get since this one hasn't really been set up. So this would be probably about how you would get a cheap used Stratocaster, you know, missing a string. Oh, the action isn't too bad on it. Usually you'll get one and the action would be up here or something. This is pretty much what you need to set up your own guitar. You need some string clippers, set of strings. These are D'Addario 9 through 42 we're going to put on it. String winder, you don't have to have that, but uh, it's nice. Screwdriver, micro ruler, and you need an Allen wrench for the saddles, and you need one for the truss rod. This is gonna be pretty easy because I don't float the tremolos on these. There's a whole lot of little tricks of the trade for floating the tremolo on a Strat where they float it off of the body a little bit. I keep all of mine hammered down to the body just because I want the thing to stay in tune as much as possible. As you mess with guitars, you'll have your own little order you like to do things in. I check the neck relief out first. Just a real easy way to do that is just lay your hand or your arm on the strings. Fret the first fret. Feel through here what kind of clearance you got. The luthier guys got feeler gauges. I just do it by feel and look. You can hear it ting, 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 ting. The straighter the neck, this gap will tighten up more. And if you want to check it more, you can bring this hand up to the 17th, 15th fret or whatever. Bar the first fret. There's relief in this neck, so I'm not going to mess with the neck right now. If you wanted to check the nut height, you can just fret the third fret and see if you got clearance through here. You know, I can hear the ting, 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 and there's not a big gap. Seems cool. But yeah, that's just something you can look over when you get a guitar. Look over the string alignment. See if the neck is shifted at all in the pocket. See how the alignment is. Sometimes there'll be a gap here. You know, it would take all day to go through all of the little nitpicky things. But you know, just stuff like that. Sometimes vintage saddles will get pushed sideways too. And you'll have to loosen the string tension and push the saddles back together. That's usually the vintage Fender Fender style saddles. Let's just sort of look at where the action sit on the thing. Which isn't too bad. The wound is up around, uh, it's at about 3.30 seconds. So I'm gonna, we're gonna bring the action down on this thing. I'd like to bring it down closer to 2.30 seconds or 1 16th. Something I worry about with these is some people complain about there being high frets on these. So you're really gonna notice that when you bring the action down to where a stock guitar would be. There's no fret outs on this thing. We'll see if we're gonna have any when we put it back down to like a like a 232nd 16th of an inch stock action. You don't have to pull the back plate off on this one, but I'm going to because I've never had this off, I don't think. So I'm gonna pull this off just so I can see what it looks like in here. This is the first time I've had this back plate off. Wow, they really hammered this claw all the way back. And it's got this typical V. I normally don't do this. I normally keep the springs in a straight row, especially if the tremolo is floating, because this is kind of like uneven tension here. One thing I'm gonna go ahead and do to save some stress on the new strings is I'm gonna go ahead and sit the action with these old strings on it, or at least get the action closer to where I want it. It'll just put less stress on the new strings when they go on. What I'm doing is I'm checking it at the 12th fret and like the 21st. That's a little over 230 seconds, which is fine for the sixth string. Okay, fifth string is a good amount over. It's almost 330 seconds. So we'll bring that one down. All right, looks good. 230 seconds, a little over 230 seconds. Okay, fourth string, it can come down a little bit. All right, let's see what's up with the G string. 21st fret, it's quite a bit over. Dude, the first string is like stupid high. All right, man. Loosen these old strings. Clip them with your clippers. Now 
Now someone asked me to make a video about fingerboard maintenance. Usually when I get a used guitar, I'll basically give it a naphtha bath, which naphtha is Ronsonol or Zippo fluid. People might disagree with me, but that's what I do, especially if it's rosewood, naphtha, or lighter fluid. It pulls all of the oils out of the rosewood. So all of the filthy ass grime from the previous owner, they don't wash their hands. They put fingerese, they slather fingerese grease all over the fingerboard. You know, you got chicken wing grease on there from where they were watching the game and eating chicken wings and noodling. I don't want that crap on my finger. So yeah, I usually naphtha bath a used guitar. If it's uh, if it's rosewood, I'll put the naphtha directly on the rosewood and then scrub to get the dirt and grime and pull the oils out. You'll notice after you naphtha bath rosewood, it'd be nice and dry looking. You know, some people might want to condition it back with lemon oil. I don't do that. The guitars I have that are rosewood i just let my finger oils what little bit might get in there get in there so maybe i should treat my rosewood but i don't and for maple other than just wiping it down maple really requires i don't guess any maintenance i've napped the bath maple though from used guitars so that's what i do with the fingerboards my rosewood guitars just from me playing them if i change the strings i'll go over them with a rag just to get anything off of the fret wire up against the fret wire i don't put lemon oil and stuff i basically just used a clean sock to go over and wipe everything down the fingerboard and everything I tighten these screws down since I'm not using the tremolo anyways. I snugged these tuner nuts up a little bit. They were a tiny bit loose. And that's it, man. Surprisingly, not having to do a whole lot of this thing. It's in pretty, pretty good shape. I mean, even the action wasn't off by much. You know, just like a maybe a 64th, a couple of the strings. I'm actually pretty impressed. All right, so here's the new strings. And this is simple stuff that all you guys should know. Just flip it over. I like to run all of the strings through the tremolo block first. We got all our strings running through. Okay, now there's a million ways to do this here. I'm gonna show you how I do it. For the six string, run the string through the post. I measure with my finger. I usually give the six string about a notch and a half to about right there, and then I bend it. So you have a bend this way, and then bend it back this way. So you just put a lightning bolt in the string. Some people take the bend and have the string sticking straight up, and then do this. Start winding, I let the windings go underneath so the windings are going towards the post or towards the headstock. Now see that little one and a half notch gave me pretty much a perfect winding on that post, see? All right, the fifth string, I give two notches, two, two finger length or two finger ligament lengths for the fifth string. So I'll pull it to the second joint and bend it. Back the bend back up to the post. Start to wind it, boom. Put your lightning bolt bend in it, then start winding. Make sure the winds go underneath. The new windings are going towards the bottom of the post. Okay, fourth string, I give two and a half before the bend. That's about two and a half. Bring the bend back to the post. Put your lightning bolt bend in it and then start winding. Third string, I also give about two and a half maybe almost three. Second string, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it almost the whole string.
first string about the same thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and wind almost the rest of the string up in it, bend it at the very end. So you see how even and clean these windings are? That's professional right there, boy. Something I do that is helpful if you actually use the tremolo on these strats is I put chapstick on the nut just as a lubricant. They make stuff like graphite based stuff. Some of it's expensive. Just lift the string out, put a dab of chapstick in there in the slot. Could do this before you string it, but by winding the strings through, you might pull all of the chapstick out of the slot. You know what I'm saying? So there you have it. At this point, you'd probably want to check your pickup height and then, you know, tune it. You'll have to stretch the strings a couple of times and retune it back up.